Google just announced a ton of new things at that IO event, and while some of it felt like marketing, let's focus on what developers will care about. As the AI try-on feature probably isn't going to help you code better, you'll just look better while doing it. There's a ton to get through here and I don't want to waste any more time, so let's jump into what's new from Google I.O. First up, Google just launched Jules, their autonomous AI coding agent now in public beta. Jules works asynchronously in a secure VM, cloning your GitHub repo to understand your entire project, and it can write tests, build new features, fix bugs, and even provide audio change logs, so one day you might have a stand-up with your AI agents. How crazy would that be? Under the hood, it's powered by Gemini 2.5 Pro, so results should be very good, especially since that model got an update, which we'll be talking about in a bit. If you don't like autonomous agents though, and you still like to code alongside them, they did also make Gemini Code Assist generally available. This is that Copilot extension for VS Code or JetBrains, and that's now also powered by Gemini 2.5 Pro. Next was a really interesting announcement, Stitch. This is a new experiment to streamline UI design and development. It uses Gemini 2.5 Pro to turn your ideas, whether that's text prompts or even images of your sketches or wireframes, into complex, high-quality UI designs. You can then iterate on these quickly and seamlessly paste your designs back into Figma or export the front-end code. It's all about making app creation easier, and I think this is a really cool application of specialized AI development. Moving on, here's one for those of you into data science. Google is supercharging Colab, its hosted Jupyter Notebook tool, making an AI-first coding partner. Powered by Gemini 2.5 Flash, the new Colab acts as an agentic collaborator, understanding your code and goals. You'll be able to query it to generate code, chat about libraries, and get smarter error fixes. The upgraded data science agent autonomously analyzes your files and presents findings while well, you can provide your own feedback. That's some of the new products then, but now let's talk models, and I'll start with Gemini Diffusion, as this one is absolutely mind-blowing. It's a new experimental research model for generating text and code, and unlike traditional methods, it uses a diffusion technique similar to what we've seen in image and video by turning random noise into coherent output. The key takeaway though is that it is freaking fast. One demo I saw on Twitter, which isn't sped up, shows the code is generated before I could even finish reading the prompt. All of this is done while maintaining the same code performance, which is crazy. There's a waitlist to try this one, but Google did mention that a faster Gemini 2.5 flash light is also coming soon. Jumping to 2.5 Pro, that's been upgraded as well, and now boasts that it's the top of Web Dev Arena and LM Arena. They also integrated Learn LM, which is a family of models built with educational experts to make 2.5 Pro the best model for learning. Taking it a step further, they're testing a new enhanced reasoning mode called DeepThink that uses new research techniques to enable the model to consider multiple hypotheses before responding. It gets some seriously impressive scores with this in maths, code, and multimodality, beating both 03 and 04 mini. The maths advantage is particularly impressive. Sadly, you can't test this one yet as they want to conduct some safety tests to make sure this model doesn't take over the world. But it's not all about Pro either. Flash got some upgrades too, and it now performs much better on the benchmarks, particularly at reasoning, multimodality, code, and long context. For both the 2.5 models, the API got some new tricks. 2.5 is getting more conversational with native audio output via the live API, allowing natural dialogue where you can even steer its tone and accent. This means the model can converse in more expressive ways. It can even seamlessly switch to a whisper like this. It features effective dialogue to be able to detect emotion, proactive audio to ignore background noise, and enhanced thinking. There's new text-to-speech which supports multiple speakers and subtle nuances in over 24 languages, and computer use capabilities are coming to the API for developers later this year. Security has been boosted against prompt injections, plus developers get clearer thought summaries and thinking budgets for 2.5 Pro to control costs, and there's better open source tool integration with MCP, which is absolutely awesome. Finally, for the API, we're also getting asynchronous function calling to enable longer running functions or tools to be called in the background without blocking the main conversational flow. And something I've wanted for a long time is URL context, which retrieves full page context from URLs in the prompt without having to rely on the search tool, which is super nice. The best place to try a lot of this stuff is in the AI studio, and this now has the new generative media models like Imagen, VO, and native image generation. VO3 has been mind-blowing, by the way, with the ability to include audio in your generated videos. This ocean, it's a force, a wild, untamed might. And she commands your awe with every breaking light. They've also integrated Gemini 2.5 Pro into the AI Studio native code editor, so you can generate your web apps there with 2.5 Pro. This next model is a great step and one that I'm surprised that Apple didn't get to first. Google has announced a preview of Gemma 3N, a new mobile-first open AI model, and it's optimized for fast, private, on-device, multimodal AI, even powering the next Gemini Nano. The models can apparently operate with a dynamic memory footprint of just 2GB. 
Gemma 3N is going to offer faster responses, understand audio, images, and video, and improve multilingual skills. An insane benchmark here is that on Chatbot Arena, the model is nearly matching Claude 3.7 Sonnet on a phone. And I did mention that this powers Gemini Nano as well, so what's this? Well, this is the model that they have in Chrome, and they've enabled even more integrations. Chrome DevTools will soon have AI assistance, so you can now directly apply suggested changes to your files in the Elements panel. And the Performance panel will have an Ask AI integration that provides contextual performance insights to help optimize your web application's core web vitals, so you can finally score perfect hundreds. Gemini Nano is also going to power more Chrome APIs, so starting from Chrome 138, the Summarizer, Language, Detector, Translator, and Prompt API for Chrome extensions are available in Stable. The Writer and Rewriter APIs are available in Origin Trials, and the Proofreader API and Prompt API with multimodal capabilities are available in Canary. So lots of stuff for us developers to dig into. Let's wrap this up then with a few for Android developers. Get ready for new generative AI tools. MLKit Gen AI APIs using Gemini Nano are here for on-device tasks. Material 3 Expressive is here, so you can build adaptive apps across phones, foldables, tablets, Chrome OS, now even cars and Android XR. And finally, Gemini in Android Studio is evolving with new AI agents like Journey for end-to-end -end testing and version upgrade agent to help you manage your dependencies, making you way more productive. There we go. That's everything from Google I.O. that I think developers need to know. If you know anything that I missed, leave it in the comments down below. While you're there, subscribe. And as always, see you in the next one.